Mm. <laughs> Unlucky, though, because when that does happen, they end up losing the game. But not because of him. He's doing as much as he can to help him out. And now, with that slam in, the coaches smash going head to head. Once again, it's game two WE versus Invictus Gaming. We've got the exact same three bands from Team WE and the same two bands so far from IG. Let's see if they ban away that LeBlanc again. And they just go back to the same pick and ban. Could they possibly try to run that same composition back against WE? Ah, turns out not. They ban the Rakan. Invictus Gaming already changing the playing field. There's still a lot of picks up and available for WE to prioritize. Elise still stands out as a major one. Galio as well. Both champions. Insta bans in globally, honestly. So Unless you miss stick at WE. Yeah, you know what? You know what? <laughs> Screw the rest of the world. This is my champion. <laughs> He plays Zaya. Mystic loves it. There's not even a Rakan now available, but Mystic does not care. And I guess this is a point where we do have to mention that West plays a lot of it. He's quite a prolific Zaya player himself, and they just have the priority for Mystic and away from West. We're probably going to be seeing a lot more laning coming out of Megan and Ben with Alistar, Thresh, and of course the Rakan being banned out. Maybe it's going to be a race towards the Ardent Sensor picks, the Janas, the Lulus. They could hold on to this into the second phase. And if you see that, of course, both of these players have played Bard before, so still a lot of options available. Mm. We do see, once again, another Gragas for Ning. His Gragas was stellar during playoffs. And while we didn't get to see it too much yesterday, it's a champion that he's very comfortable on, but looks like he's going for a similar pick and ban as Twitch oh, there we go. gets changed up right away from West. So that's a quick and fast one. I want to talk about the Gragas, though, because that leaves WE with the ability to pick into it a stronger jungler. You've seen the Olaf come back a little bit more, so Condi should be comfortable in this first phase to pick something strong into Gragas, and that just means the 2v2 that we've been kind of alluding to in the top side of the map will still be weak. Yeah, I think Cho'Gath is a place that you still want to be looking towards. There's no reason not to have it ultimately because you're taking it from the Shy, picking it for yourself. But now they know they're against that Twitch as well as mentioned. They need something that can kill him. Zaya gets outranged quite severely by Twitch as you hit mid and late game and he just sprays and prays everybody down. They need someone else that can either get onto him or protect. And of course, following the OMG set, the team that plays with Twitch quite often, doubles up with the Janna or Lulu. I expect Lulu, be, Lulu to be picked up here. We'll keep an eye on that support. Of course, WA on the other side, they've got one way to get to that Twitch. Cho God, certainly very good at just flash feasting. If you land a rupture, if you land a feral scream, heck, if you have Ben leaping in on Braum to lock him down, yep. that just sets, makes it so much easier to devour that very tasty AD carry. But a denial, perhaps, Coming out of IG, the Cosmic Radiance invulnerability to prevent that from happening. Yeah, the Tarek pick coming through is still an ardent sensor user. He's a tank who can go towards it. He is. And the best thing about it, it gives a time limit towards these team fights, where if you don't kill them during that small limit, of course, then you have the invulnerability, and it looks like IG's going towards that team fight center. And even one step better, he has a good matchup into Braum as supports. Go Tarek does exceptionally well into that matchup, handles the lane decently well. Braum has kill threat. So does Tarek. They go pretty equally in the end. And that, if that's a Twitch going equally, everyone's happy, <laughs> namely all of IG. Yeah, everyone on IG are happy. WE, on the other hand, maybe not so much, unless Mystic can have another stellar performance on this side. Maybe look for a second MVP. Now, taking a look at these bands, we can see Kha'Zix banned away from Condi. Invictus Gaming with the respect. And WE, same thing. They ban away Rookie Syndra. Yeah, that was the risk that WE is taking, picking up the Braum in first phase, meaning that it's actually going to be a trade in terms of the jungle pool, right? Kha'Zix being banned out. Yeah. Of course, Olaf is still available, so Condi should still feel okay with that. Yeah, and Olaf's a good option. Not just that, though. Picking the Braum this early, I feel like it leaves open Lucian as a champion of choice. And my question here is, will Shie have a priority towards it? Again, range, double tap, passive, very good with Braum, can go mid lane, or will Rookie deny it? Ooh, this could be interesting. Invictus Gaming. Do they save counterpick for Rookie this time in game number two? Or do they save counterpick for the Shy? Yeah, that might be the case, especially with Cassiopeia being up and available as the counter towards the Lucian pick. So could be Rookie saying, I want Cassio if the Lucian pick does go towards WE, but then you're losing sight of the composition. With Braum, the double AD carry composition makes it so much easier to kite back in these fights. Mm -hmm. Of course, that AP damage going to be... That's Whoa. a lock-in. Oh, that's an that's Ezreal, Ezreal mid lane. locked in. No way. Wait a second. Wait, uh... Mm. 
I don't know about that one. We As see real jungle. Hand up from Coach Ohm. Yeah, that's is there, the there's up. a hand up. And the Talia is locked in. If this Lucian is locked in, it's going to be secured. Oh, Holy you know moly. What? That's it. Is that it? That has to. It's an Ezreal jungle. This is the best Ezreal. day ever. I has. cannot believe it. The last time I saw that was legitimately so long ago in North America where we saw NK oh. Inc. Nothing else. Nothing back since then. Or at oh. least from my eyes. Condi. This is the best. Where is this coming from? Solo Q. That's exactly <laughs> where it's coming from. <laughs> Ezreal is actually a champion that has a very good jungle clear because of the passive attack speed, mm -hmm. the fact that you've got the Q with the auto attack. I'm not sure strategically where it's coming from, but I can tell you that it's coming from the depths of Solo Q where there are people who play it. <laughs> oh, man. We haven't seen this since there was Smite Ezreal mid or even just before that when Ezreal was actually in the jungle. The strategy the last time I remember seeing Ezreal jungle was just legitimately hard push lanes. Like the Ezreal wouldn't even gank at that point. He wouldn't even jungle. He would just take a camp, red buff, blue buff, walk towards the bottom lane, start chipping down tower, go towards the top lane, and it would just become the earliest snowball you can ever see. I don't know if that's gonna be coming through, but that has to be the case because I have never seen this before. There's a wealth of options for an Ezreal, Raz, and depending on the side of the rift, remember he is going to be on the bottom side. He has his double uh, bottom lane rather leashing for him. He'll have an exceptionally fast start of the clear if he wants. Blue buff for Lion Champion though, so my expectations here is that he goes red buff, straight to his blue, and then gets top lane. It's going to be so exciting to keep track of that jungle Ezreal's pathing because this is wildly unique, and what better way to gain the momentum in this series by taking game two with the likes of this absolutely unexpected pick. And while IG have been playing games after games, set after set, WE were just planning. The week that they had since their last loss, They've been cooking up a strategy. I thought it was going to be like a Twisted Fate, a Fizz or something coming out of CA, maybe a carry top laner. It's an Ezreal jungle. Of all things to be cooking, Raz, yeah. this is what they find in their kitchen. <laughs> Very interesting out of Team WB. We'll see how it works out or if IG can withstand the clash and turn this series into a best of three by answering back because we're loading into the rift. The fans are already hype as heck. It's game two between WE and IG. I can't believe that I am watching this. They're not as coordinated in a circular arena, unfortunately, I, Dom, but a I lot of hype nonetheless. It seems like they're actually being competitive in their chance. They're overshouting each other. Now they're coordinated. There they go. That's mostly WE in the audience, but there are definitely some diehard and passionate uh, IG fans. But how can you not be excited yeah. for an Ezreal in the jungle in game two of a best of five to go to Worlds? West sneaking around the back for some auto attacks. Just steps forward. She is even being pulled as well as the threaded volley catches Rookie for just a bit of damage. And the one thing we didn't actually mention was the mid lane matchup. We had an inclination towards a Lucian and we did get it. Rookie's mm. Lucian, no less. Something that has to be mentioned. He's just that good of a Lucian. WE are invading this blue buff right now away from IG. And there is a ward that sees this happening, but... <sighs> okay, so... As someone who's not seen Jungle Lucian in years. Ezreal. That's one, Ezreal. And I wonder what his, his actual rune page is, and if he gets to level three early, that would showcase to me what his strategy is if he's going to look to pressure up in the jungle. I mean, they're seeing, we're seeing a skirmish in the bottom lane. Actually, it's going to turn into something. It's already That's ignited. stunned and ignited as he actually turns back with uh, what looks to be his exhaust. And that's going to be damaging with exhaust down and a lot of HP down on Tark. Condi is on, on this side of the map. He isn't going to leave this side of the map. They're trading sides of the jungle. It's going to make it immediately much easier for Condi to just go towards the bottom side. The things that have to be mentioned, of course, you haven't seen a lot of Ezreal jungle. Blue Reliant needs to have the blue, needs to keep up his five stacks. Levels W at level three because you get the attack speed bonus by using your E through it. That is how you jungle clear, then generally you'll kite the camps every time E is off cooldown. The attack speed at five stacks is incredible. Uh, regarding runes, usually you'll go for AD because you don't need the attack speed mm -hmm. because if you've got that passive there. So Ezreal very much adept at jungling, believe it or not, mm -hmm. and is fantastic at clearing camps with decent health. And that's what we see right now. He's looping around That's towards Drybush, 
And like you said, it is a very big wave. Blast cone straight in. He's got the red buff, speeds up Mystic's attack. That's West, he sidestepped the flash, but the stun locks him down. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a pause. I don't want to be in this position. This, uh, I just feel like we've been put in a cliffhanger. We have. The series has ended. <laughs> no, it hasn't ended. It's Oof. just a pause. But this is not a place you want to pause. Absolutely. Holding your breath. And what a way to get out of this pause, too. Holy cow. Yeah, and I mean, this was orchestrated right from level one, especially since the trading went through. So Ezreal forced that split tr uh, trade in terms of jungle pathing. He went towards for an early blue buff start that meant that if Gragas tried to contest him, he's going to be triple buff immediately. Yeah. So Gragas chose the right decision in terms of keeping experience up, but that meant that West and Megan had to play passively if they lost a trade or even just took an even trade. That's immediately going to be a 3v2 bottom lane. It means that W once again forcing their strategy, forcing their hand on something that has been successful for them. So definitely a... Uh a likely case here, but this, this this doesn't just happen at level one either. This doesn't just happen from the blue buff invade. This is all from pick ban, something that we mentioned during that ban phase when Braum was picked above all else, yes. is that you might have a Lucian mid to proc the Braum passive, get the stuns off successfully as you skirmish a team fight. But what if we get rid of the Lucian, <laughs> and instead of having Lucian there, our jungler can come bottom at level three and pretend his Lucian, auto attack from range, and still get the Braum stun off. It feels like... The strategy revolves around this dive that they're currently doing. Yeah, it does. If it's a successful dive, essentially that's a snowball that they can push forward and theoretically win the game off that. There. If it's a failed dive, they get pushed off of that, then it's so much harder for them to utilize this composition. Mid lane is a counter pick. Lucian does so well into Talia. They lose early, they lose hard. Yeah, and this is rookie's Lucian. This is the champion that he tried to hard carry with against WE in the third place match. And despite a massive performance against Shie, he was not able to take the win in that matchup, though that was against the likes of Shie on Corky and not the Talia. But we already saw a little bit of trading earlier. I mean, Lucian does exceptionally well into Talia and Corky being able to weave around as we're watching the dive. Oh, and that's oh. first blood. Ben survives it too, as there are even more auto attacks onto Megan. It's gonna be hard for them to try for another one. Megan is full HP and Ben can Ben hits the Q they oh, can. Oh, that's it. the Q. Ben steps out, taking only a single one. Condi goes low and is forced to flash away. They lock it down. Two kills for WE. Deja vu for WE between game one and two as well. They don't just get the kills, they get two of them. They get a minion wave collapsing. It's a massive wave and everything just cascades from this point for WE. Yeah, such a well played out dive, immediately taking down this turret because of course the attack speed boost coming out of Ezreal makes it all the more easier. Ning, ooh, looks for the dive. That's an early heal used as Rookie steps forward. Xie is low and gets a lot of damage onto Ning. That was really smart from Xie. He didn't burn his flash. That was a very risky move. Had Gragas flash body slammed, that would have been disastrous, but immediately starting towards the bottom lane. Condi steps in and just leads the way for Mystic. Now, the second Braum hits that Q, the dive is happening. That was the go button for WE. And because it connects, they've got the heal. Ben will survive long enough from the damage of the champions as his Braum with the door up and then just gets out. Yeah, but in fact, Ben just healing up, was able to take one, maybe two tower shots, just with one. And that was all he really needed. So you can tell that the communication was still coming through, that they wanted to go for the dive. Yeah. They just needed the potions to really tick in. And the exact same strategy from game one in a completely different look is effective. Two early kills for WE to set up that bottom lane. And again, one onto Condi, one onto Mystic. Those two are gonna be real big later on. And here's the thing, they weren't able to take that bottom lane tower just yet. That's why Condi is still here. His focus, as in Ezreal, is to snowball based off of the towers, the tower gold. If he can get this, it should be easy, then that's great. But now you've given Ning the opportunity to respond. And you've also given Rookie a free 1v1 in the mid lane. The heal was already burnt by Ning just body slamming in. But most importantly, the CS difference between them is starting to stretch. If Ben wasn't there to catch that entire wave of about 10 minions, then he was 20 behind. And Ben basically saves that lane just a little bit more for Shea in what was a pretty bad situation. And now again, Condi with the constant invading. He has laid claim to this side of the jungle. He's skirmishing with Ning. Look at the harass that this Ezreal is landing. Yeah, he was trying to get the Mystic shots across to force the uh, Ning away from the blue side jungle. Push him top side so then he can actually go towards that tower. 
but well enough. Ning is standing firm. The shy, meanwhile, doing as he is wont to do, just harassing 957 non-stop on this top side of the map. But still, 957, he's not making the mistakes Shi Young made. He's keeping even in CS. He's holding on to his flash. Yeah, he certainly is doing well to stay close enough to equal, and that's all you can really ask of him, honestly, in a matchup against the Rumble, who has the push over you. Ning also now threatening the bottom side of the map. But what we are looking at is a challenging smite through Condi mm. on that Ezreal also. Wants to empower his auto attacks and his damage. They've also got Talia. Oh, no the Shy! Way. Dies solo to 957. He can get away with that going up against Young, but 957 is the captain of WE. He's going to challenge you when you try and step up, and he comes out ahead. This is something that should not happen, but the Shy, we know what he's like as a player. We know his play style. 957 on top of the equalizer. The flash, fantastic. That was an overheat and a knockup, so the Rumble's direction couldn't change. Condi. Oh, they found Condi. He shifts away and goes down. That's the one person you don't want off the map if you're WE. A lot of great things were happening across the map. 957 picking up the kill on the top side. But Condi needs to be available so he can continue to pressure down this turret. But scumbag Megan had to take the kill. Ah, uh, that's true. So unfortunate. Mm -mm. Kill secure. And any amount of gold that he can possibly get is gold much needed by Invictus Gaming. They're still down 600. They're very close to losing this bottom tier one. As Mystic and Ben step forward. That's the flash. Stun. He's taking a lot of damage, but the slow lands. Ben leaps back as they are just trading this health onto Ning. Well, they Ning. Oh. Concussive blows as he's stunned. West is about to get stunned too. Mystic is sidestepping everything. He goes low. West with the auto. Gets ready. Tries oh. to trade it over and finally locks it down. Winter's bite prevents any further chase. It was so close. Mystic was very close to get the stun onto Ning. But Ning kept walking. The stun, the Brahm stun, wasn't long enough. Yeah, instead of choosing to disengage, though, WE look aggressively. They look for the trade. They look to make the play themselves, and evidently not what they should have done. I admire the confidence to take that play, though. Yeah, they didn't want to lose time. With Kondi off the map, they thought they could still do it. I like the idea, as you mentioned, the, the confidence in being able to pull it off. But Ning recognized that. He was in position, and his counter ganking has been stellar thus far. This one, he just realized that he could make the fight happen. Now we can see that Invictus Gaming, they've still got some fight in them. WE, they might have had a plan, they might have had something ready cooking in the kitchen over the last week, but Invictus Gaming, they've been cooking something up themselves. Some raw skills, some teamwork, some communication. Yeah, and this is when I start to worry about uh, WE's composition because they haven't gotten that power just yet. They want to have that snowball going through. Sure, yeah. the first dive was great, but if they're not able to break tower and start pushing this through, Talia will continue to have a bad time not being able to leave this lane. And of course, Twitch is going to be able to farm up. He's already 60 CS to the 73, which is surprisingly good with how much he's been focused. Not to mention we're seeing Rookie open up a CS advantage. You already mentioned, mentioned that just a bit, Raz. 20 ahead of Shie there. The Shy opening up another CS advantage. So it seems like IG have finally found their stride, but Shie, he's looping around real quick. That's Boots too. Yeah, and yeah. I don't think he wants to use his Weaver's Wall just yet because of how low the power is. But he is happy to threaten with the Weaver's Wall, and that's the thing. You know, Lucian has been controlling this middle lane, but she has got blue buff right now, and suddenly that control Lucian has starts to be threatened. The fact that he disappears for five seconds towards the bottom side means that IG have to respect that. Talia can be anywhere at a moment's notice, and suddenly this turret is conceded. There's no chance to clear the wave successfully. The 2v2 is influenced. And simultaneously, Kandi is on the dragon, immediately burning it away with that challenging smite, with that completed warrior's enchant. Yeah, at first I was wondering why they decided to deny so many minions under tower so they can keep the wave large, thick enough, so that they can move topside and have tempo. But the dragon seems to be the focus, and it's successful at that. Yeah, of course, by extending that time spent under the turret, you're extending the time spent IT are watching you deny the minions and watching you take the turret. You keep them there, you prevent someone from going over to look at the drake, I suppose. And now, with that uh, presence from Kandi on the map, he's invaded and gotten some wards, allowing Mystic to continue shoving on this bottom side. Even Kandi shows here, up. Though. Ooh. That's the wall. Shie separates oh, the team. Canceled him. Ning tries to get over. Yeah, Cancelled the body slam, so it looks like IG, they'll still hold, but they didn't expect him to be there, I guess. Yeah, I wonder if they now pivot towards the mid lane, wait for Talia to push in, knowing how many members went towards bottom lane. That was still a play 
WE wanted to make to get more chip on that turret was unsuccessful in doing so. Ooh, an elaborate trap from Team WE. Just playing this vision game, IG. Nice and patient. They're respecting it, but they're starting to push out bottom. Here we go. Here we go. WE loop around the corner. They are now behind. They've got a gaming. big that loop to take, though. Run. Very low mana on that Twitch. Megan screams loudly as he discovers them all. You've got Shea flanking and teleports in. Oh, that's the flash. West is caught. Cosmic Radiant. He's stunned, but he's got the invulnerability. Walking away. Rookie now has joined the fight as the Shy joins it from the other side. Equalizer on top of the back as this is IG finding a big cast. They've got Ben Low. Ning leaps in. He's stunned, and they trade one for one so far. Continuing to burn it away. Oh. And that's Rookie flashing forward for the kill. He going to get a second one. Chasing WE Rookie all the wants way it. back to the turn. That's a triple kill for Rookie, a quadruple kill for Rookie, no! but he is denied the Penta. Double kill for Shie. as IG bite off too much, but they still come up huge. How did that happen? I mean, that was so good from the Shy. His ulti, that equalizer was so well done and kept WE burning and ultimately I mean, they just took so much damage underneath it. And Shie actually picks up the kills. He shuts down Rookie and at the same time has two kills in his back pocket. And ultimately, what was going to be a pentakill, an amazing, an amazing play from Rookie, is going to be denied. It actually keeps Shie in the game just a little bit better because he's going to get the kills back himself. IG still get the team fight, still get the turret, still actually find themselves in the driver's seat. You're absolutely right. IG now up in gold. They're starting to get these item completions, starting to get back on pace with WE. That was all on the Tarek ultimate, ultimate that Megan used because they decided they needed to stand their ground and fight. There was no one going to be left behind in this case, so Twitch was saved. TP comes through, Shy is here, and so his equalizer was incredible. It shut them off. They needed to get out of there. Yeah. On top of that, Gragas cast keeps them interested. Look at how much damage it was coming across. Yeah, the equalizer was great at drawing a line in the sand and saying, you're not going to pass this area. Ning also threatening means that Rookie was completely just empowered to do so much damage, but he was tanking the turret. No one else was able to tank it for him. He started seeing red, and then he gives over. Two kills to Shie oh. in pursuit of the Penta. Yeah, nearly enough. He got the double tap, but it just didn't have the damages. 957. He's caught out. He has no flash. That's a quick blade of the Ruin King. He turns it back around, and the Shy walks away as Rookie locks down another kill for IG. That's funny. They gave the kill over to Rookie. He's so close towards his Black Cleaver, the two item spike that he wants to set himself into the side wave. Suddenly, IG finds an opening this game. And this is Rookie on that Lucian against WE, the Lucian that he was so massive on but could not carry with in their third place match. It was, in fact, the later games, his Syndra, that was able to close out the series. But Rookie, he's looking to redeem that performance, show that he can carry and that he can win. And the responsibility of the players of 957 and Ben is crucial in this game. And Ezreal in the jungle is fragile. Twitch is already going to blast him and Zaya and they need to block so many things and still be able to come out the other side all right for it. It means that the auxiliaries, the tanks, they have to play this impeccably. Here comes the Weaver's Wall. There's no teleport. Ning is left on his own, but luckily, ooh, he flashes over the wall, and he has the Cosmic Radiance. Still, though, it's a Tier 1 broken by WE. Yeah, they do just fine. WE, they're taking as much as they can and utilizing it whenever they have the Weaver's Wall. But still, these are proper responses coming through from Invictus Gaming. Challenging red buff, sure taking chip damage on the mid lane turret. If that mid lane turret goes down, it's so much harder for CA to go for that play once more. Rookie looked for it, but wasn't able to find it that time. The Shy, like you said, contesting that red buff again, not able to find it as it just resets and Condi will happily walk back into his own jungle to retrieve it. But 15 minutes in, it's nearly dead even in gold, dead even in kills. Next Dragon's up in 60 seconds, and that is an infernal. That's why the bottom side of the map is going to be a major focus for both teams, solely for Invictus Gaming. They have a little bit of a, a new dimension to it. They can actually try to play towards mid and try and threaten this mid lane tower with how low it is. So suddenly, WE, even if they get vision control towards the bottom side of the map, it's so easily cleared because they have two things they need to defend. Yeah, and ultimately, whilst Infernal is a big Drake that they should all be looking towards, the Elder, uh, sorry, the Elder, the Rift Infernal. Herald, I'm oh, pretty sure Herald. I'm yeah, well yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> the Rift Herald is also a big objective for WE to be able to break the mid lane structure 
of IG. Of course, yes, it goes both ways, but Rookie is slowly chipping away at it by himself. WE, you would say their direction will be towards the Infernal to stop IG from getting it, but at the same time, there is a very large priority placed towards that Rift Herald. Yeah, the Shy is actually trucking bottom right now. That's a Mia ping that might have spotted him as he's racing down to join his team in mid lane. Mystic is already pushing the minion wave forward. Yeah, that's why IG can play this one as slow paced as they possibly can. It doesn't matter if WE get the vision control towards Dragon if they don't immediately start onto it. So it's in Condi's best interest, the team's best interest. If they want to have this as their priority to start it now, he has to go. Condi's in the pit, just leaps over the wall. She there goes is behind. IG as all 10 members are grouped up, ready to fight once again. You'd have to imagine they are looking for it. The Weaver's Wall is out to separate them. Condi. Oh, but what an equalizer on the opposite side. Draws the line as that Infernal Dragon picked up. Culling hits the front line as Megan needs some damage from Shie, but Rookie, will he give up the chase? What hurts here for WE is how low they are now. Yeah. Losing the Infernal Dragon. Now the question is if they can contest this mid lane tower or the Rift Herald. It's up to IG to choose. I mean, thankfully for WE, Condi has the red buff, so he will regenerate when he's out of combat. He's also going back to his jungle to regenerate just as much. IG, they haven't overcommitted. They haven't used the health advantage to try and force down the structure, because once again, there's an easier way to do this, and that's by picking up the Herald objective. Hmm. Instead, they're prepping that top half of the map. Recall from both Condi and Shie to protect 957, perhaps predicting a play out of Invictus Gaming, but for now, they just catch their waves. They build up those items that they need. It's Black Cleaver finally finished. Runon's for West as he recalls and picks up now a BF sword. And Leandri's <laughs> already finished for the Shy as Damn that Herald. <laughs> oh, no. He's chasing him through. Keeps on lugging its way back. Yeah, Rookie finally picking up his Black Cleaver. That's the signal for him to be on a side lane. He can stick to mid if he wants to be able to take down this turret. But now he has the option to challenge bot. Shie can't follow, and if he does, he has to be near his turret to defend, which gives Rookie the ability to go towards mid lane. So they just have the priority in what they end up choosing towards. What's the next objective here? There's always that lingering concern if you're WE, above all else, that Twitch will hit his late game. He's already got one item, he's working towards two, and then there's not a lot left before he can kill everybody in a team fight. One man wrecking crew. And look at that West, so patient. Allows the minions to come to him. Doesn't step towards the Braum or the Zaya. He knows he's got time on his side. So he just plays it out as rookie. Yeah, I don't think 957 can take him. He's going no, he towards cannot. a bit of magic resist as well. So he's got himself a problem trying to build against the Shy. Now seeing that he has to face uh, Lucian. Yeah, a good move from IG as well, right? Being able to put Lucian into the Cho'Gath lane, knowing that he's not all that equipped to deal with him. Blade of the Wrong King, Black Cleaver, will shred tanks. That means top is undefended. The Shy, he's pushing all the way up to the tier one, holding onto his teleport. Shie has been spotted mid, but there are five members of WE here. Four with 957 hanging out bottom. I see Lucian looking to go mid. Rookie has that ability. He can do that, but just faking it, just kind of leaning towards the lane, means that suddenly WE has to disengage and it allows him to stay in the bottom lane. Well, they want they the shot. Struck in top, nine fives, or excuse me, the Shy on the wrong side of the wall. Shie hems him in. Here comes the rest of them. Look at the burn damage. No way. And the equalizer, he sidesteps the tectonic rupture, but slowly but surely, he goes low, he goes down. And this is IG making a trade. Rookie is pushing bottom, the rest of IG are pushing mid. I don't think they can get a turret off this because 957 is pushing them off mid. He should have more members on the way. Maybe Lucian in the bottom lane. Ooh, that's a stun. Megan takes the aggro. Righteous glory. The turret falls, but West looks to be the target. 957 slows him and flash to escape from both Ning and West. Still some damage onto Megan, but not enough to kill him. Meanwhile, Rookie took the bottom tier two. Exactly, yeah. Two turrets end up going down here in favor of IG. The only thing they had to trade for it is two flashes. Well, you'd look at that and you'd say absolutely worth for the side of IG. Doesn't mean that WE can even come back at them and start trading. There's a rookie. Oh, Still and forwards. the from Ning, waiting for the wall to drop. The cast hits Ben front and center, and he's knocked back into his team. Yeah, there we go. I mean, I didn't see it coming. Uh, the tower is being taken down. The fact that Rookie had that much time left with the tower. And oh, oh, got it, got it. Oh, the auto attack. Everything and more Rookie will be taking from their side. Can give single-handed victories, always the case, always available. 
if Rookie decides that he wants it bad enough, and he wants it. And slowly but surely, Invictus Gaming are starting to take an advantage in this. They've got 2,200 gold ahead. They're moving around the map, and while they did just trade the Shy, he was able to buy more than enough time to allow IG to open up the map just a bit more, and now that Rift Herald has disappeared. Yeah, and I feel like IG, the fact that they're being able to gain more access into the enemy si side jungle, you see what Rookie has done here. Being able to take the Krugs out completely. Might even take out 957's life. Oh, he's got a long way to go. Steps into the brush. Rookie tries to kite it around. Oh, dodges the hey, rupture. Look at the damage. An early feast, but 957 goes down. Just that easy, especially with the build that he has, Rusty. The yeah. tank busting build. He's got to get out of here. I don't even know if he does. He might even look towards the trades. And right now, IG, the reason the Rookie would look towards it is because they're on the other side of the map, the Baron something they're actually looking towards. Rookie is just that big of a threat. 957 is up in 18 seconds, but they see that the Baron has been started. There's no chance for Rookie to get there. He's it's not going, though. He's pushing bottom lane. IG are baiting the Baron just to pull them apart. Yeah, there's no way this Baron's going to get anywhere near close, and the whole of WE are looking towards contesting that Baron. Pings down towards that Tier 2. Weaver's wall, but Rookie doesn't quite make it over. Oh, that's a teleport as he flashes in, not even going to try to dash because he's low on mana. Teleport from the Shy to escort his mid laner to safety. Yeah, well played from the Shy to help him out. Rookie tried to make the auto attacks mean something by flashing in, but it was not going to be the case. And here's the trade from WE. They just go mid knowing that it's undefended and break it down. We could have a race here. Yeah, they'll be happy to take that trade actually, WE. I know Rookie didn't have mana and had just used the ACA. Yeah. All right. Okay, West. And 957's in. Yeah, in. he teleported in from behind. WE are making a play here. They're trying to collapse. Here comes Mystic and Ben as well. That's the Righteous Glory. He's caught by the stun. There's going to be a lot of damage if he manages to find it. That's a rupture sidestep as IG looks like they're able to retreat the slow on the Megan. Cosmic so Radiant. Close. It comes down, but Megan is dead. Rookie's in. Rookie has joined the fight. He sidesteps. That's the calling. Ben sacrifices himself. Oh, he the shy. Shy from the Shy in the back as IG answer with an ace of their own. The Shy comes out of nowhere along with Rookie to save the fight. Megan did his job. The ulti saved West, and they were able to take it back. The Korean powerhouses for the side of IG. More than enough to get them this with the Shy there to tank. You would have to imagine they have enough damage to secure it. It's going to be some risky business, though, taking oh, down this Baron. it certainly is. This is the raid boss. They did PvP. Now they got to oh, do oh, PvE. No. The Shy! Oh, no! Oh, he's so low! But Baron picked up by Invictus Gaming. Even Megan got the buff. This is as good as you can get. I want to see this once more because WE were making a power move. They had positioning on West. 957 even went for it. Problem was, just on the tip, gets stunned. Megan, incredible job from him. And he makes it all the more easier for West to get out of there with the ultimate that he had. Yeah, Megan dies. Doesn't really matter because the reinforcements have arrived either way. The culling's great. Whoa. The equalizer is also great. And then oh. more so, the positioning. The fact that he's overheating, he's just hitting them all with his power hand. That's some power stance from IG. <laughs> That's Absolutely. the problem with the composition that WE has, is that they're too damn squishy. Ben is your tank, doesn't have items because he is a support, and you would look towards 957, but if you can just, just blitz past them, it's easy as possible. Now Mountain Dragon picked up by IG. They've got Infernal, they've got Mountain, they've got Baron for two and a half full minutes here as they are back out onto the Rift. And now with a 6,000 gold lead after that ace, they have completed a lot of items. And what was already starting to look a little dicey for Team WE, starting to get a lot shakier. Yeah, 2k gold difference really early on in the game in favor of Mystic has really just spiraled in favor of West. Three kills for himself, and he's farmed up even oh, throughout the game. Three items plus Ardent Sensor. That's what Infinity Edge will do here. 957 wants this. Oh, he's trading this. it back. That's going to be Shiei joining as well as Zanyas to stall this out. The rest of the team is fighting. Quick rupture to toss him back. The Feast locks down the kill. Yeah, but the response is the top lane. They're already on it. Rookie was doing his job pushing out the top side of the map. And he has the Baron buff wave. WE needs to come and defend this. 
Here comes the push. It's four members. Finally, the recall from 957, but the inhib is already going Ooh. down so low. It is broken. Fight breaks out. Cosmic Radiance Ning in the front as West goes low, but he oh, survives, he's alive. but only just the heal to keep him alive. He flashes away from 957. Oh. Have you ever seen footwork like that as Rookie is dishing it out on the side? It's a 40 second death timer on 957. It's not going to be the end of the game, but that inhib is going to come down easily. Yeah, the way that IG played that one out. Tarek comes up clutch. We don't often see very good Tareks in the LPL, but this one has been doing his work, and all he has to do is keep West alive. And with the smallest of health remaining, West is able to contribute, continue to put in work, and this is all because WE are desperate. They're making plays on the opposite side of the map, picking apart the Shy, and this is the repercussions of their actions. All eyes on West. They want to be able to kill him. Tark ulti comes in just to save him. Bam! <laughs> As the Q hits. And he didn't have heal just yet is what I'm seeing, so it was really clutch to see West come that low be able to survive off Flash it. sidestepping the Feral Scream as the invulnerability wore off and then able to survive the damage from those Trogoth autos on the far side. But as you said, WE look to be getting desperate here. There are 30 seconds still on this Baron. And now IG are pushing forward. They don't see this coming. The Shy gets a ward oh, no. over the wall. The fact that the Sweeper actually made a ward not see anything revealed their location. Kind of ironic. Now, that's Rookie with Baron, split pushing Ooh. in a side lane, already harassing 957 away. Shie is pulled aside. Yeah, Rapid Fire Ken being built from Lucian makes it a lot easier for him to kind of weave that in. Get as much chip damage, the double tap on top of Jogat. Yeah, and he's about 1600 off having the Infinity Edge there as well, so... It's like threatening, controlling a 1v2. Calling for harass. He's not even letting 957 heal off of this as he steps up to the turret. Might even finish it off as IG break down two turrets at the same time. They are pulling WE apart. And that was the last breath of their Baron as well. So he's going to be just jumping at this. They have to actually get on top of him and stop him from taking this in here. WE will say are looking for it. I'm not sure Shia has enough mana. He's too busy dealing with super minions. So ultimately, IG just walk in and they just take it. 14 kills to 10, 28 minutes in, a single inhibitor still standing for WE. Yeah, and this is when we do take a step back and look towards the Ezreal pick because it's fun. I, li I liked it, right? It is execution based. We saw the execution essentially fail really early on, and this is the repercussion. This is the penalty you pay of falling early. Victus Gaming are intent on punishing that Ezreal as much as possible, still not recalling as they are just chipping away the health on this final inhibitor turret. Super minions coming in top. The next wave's gonna be a super down bottom. Yeah, very clever stuff from IG again. Itemization choosing to take down the structures, and they are threatening this, and it will be successful if WE don't start making plays soon. West, that is a deep flank. Oh He's very God. far behind them. Steps up, gets some shots onto Ben, but the minion wave wasn't ready yet. Yeah, that was just a good positioning from Ben. Probably wasn't doing it purposely, but ultimately, Made it so it was difficult for West to kind of find a flank. This is so scary for WE. A precarious edge they now find themselves on as Weaver's Wall right down the middle tries to split the minion wave. Cosmic Radiance as they move in for the turret. That's going to keep the carries nice and healthy as Rookie steps forward. Equalizer layered on top of WE oh, as they WE. break this third inhib. Oh. The cast goes forward, as does the Shy, but he is dead. True Shot Barrage gets damaged. Ning is able to lock it down with West. It's three inhibs down, but Rookie flashes in. He's Woo. looking for Mystic, who sidesteps. It's all fancy footwork to try to lock down the end of the game. Oh, Even West, West goes too far forward and dies. He keeps doing it, West. He needs to calm down. He might have just won the entire game and then lost it all in the next team fight how many times is he going to do this we hold on yeah but barely laugh it off fear west because that was that was insane but you can see how hard it is for we at this point i still don't see a way back for them three inhibitors down like that's insane look maybe he only wasted a couple of minutes yes but it is uh, unfortunately something that we we see very often from west he needs to stop he does need to stop he just needs to stop and now WE, they've been pressed in their base for such a long time. They have hardly any vision on the map. They're racing out to try to get some wards onto the Baron buff, but first up is Mountain Dragon. And Rookie, he's already shredding through it. They bought an Infinity Edge and another Zeal after that shop as well. That is a very big Lucian. 
breaking the bank is what he's doing. Is ooh, looks like we oh, do have another big. quick pause. Too big. As he finishes that off. But again, this is WE. Holy cow, what a completely different pace here in game two. Yep, this is why you pause the game, saying they're actually ending the game far too slowly. <laughs> why are they taking monster objectives when they can run it down with their super minions? This is a fast, oh, I would say it's a fast-paced game from IG. It's just ultimately a great response from WE's failed team fight much earlier on. So now it's, it feels easy because the composition has scaled off for WE. Yeah, and it's easy to look at WE and say maybe the uh, the early execution was botched, but they still had a successful dive. They still set it up. It was more the, the counterplay from IG that was the, the best part. The fact that Ning did adjust the one thing we asked from him, the fact that they set themselves up and started scaling with their composition. Amusingly, the way that these teams win, their win conditions, generally speaking, throughout the OPL split are swapped in this series. Mm -hmm. IG are the scaling team, WE are the early game team. And that scaling is so ferocious. We're already, we, before that back, we already saw how much damage they were doing. Now they've got even more items. And WE, oh, they have to keep pace with this. At the very least, we know that they are comfortable with the late game team fights, at least in the execution, if not in the items alone. Not in this game. I okay. will legitimately <laughs> say not in this game. It is actually impossible. You would have to forcibly remove really? their keyboards <laughs> okay. so they can actually win this game. Uh, I would say that WE, casting back to really when it happened, I wanted Ezreal to be able to take down the early uh, tower just based off the first push, right? They got the first dive. They wanted to be able to take down the tower. They were so close, Twitch came back. Good response from him, right? They're not going to go for another dive. They're already pretty low. Yeah. They doubled down for it. Ning pass back down. Okay, that's that's fair. Yeah. But when Condi dies, getting picked off by the Tarek, they think, okay, they can rectify that by taking that tower. Yeah. That's when the game fell apart because then it's a scramble. It's a scramble for WE because they suddenly don't have the ability to take that tower without committing to another team fight. And it seems like that chaos is something that IG are just more comfortable with considering how the team played throughout the early half of the split in trying to find their identity. But now with Ning leading the charge so confidently with the Shy's exceptional positioning and flanks, it just makes those skirmishes that much more terrifying. Yeah, his teleports have been fantastic throughout this whole game. Rookie's been uh, supported very nicely by him. We've got Weston Megan doing very well as their duo. And then you look at the jungle roll and the fact that he did change his focus. When you bring it back to that one moment that Ezreal gets caught, WE make the mistakes. You have to think about who was the real reason the rookie even gets that quadra kill. Yeah. The answer is profoundly going to be Ning. He was just that good throughout all of it. He body slams the Ezreal. And then he's the one who forces Zaya's ultimate in the immediate fight afterwards. So played exceptionally well. And it's funny to see this. I mean, you can see the the reaction coming out of Mystic. Because this is a type of composition that you don't just pull out willy-nilly, just randomly, right? This is a week of practice. This is games upon games of just with one partner knowing that this isn't going to get leaked. And if it does, well, on sad days, you gotta <laughs> boot the partner out of here. Uh, but this was something they prepared so much for, and the fact that it is failing on a stage such as this with so much pressure on the line, that is more than just momentum being lost. That is legitimate mental boom. I mean, if anything, <laughs> outside of mental boom, this is Invictus Gaming showing that they have the poise to say, oh, you're going to cheese us. We took Yasuo into you, <laughs> and you're going to bring Ezreal jungle back? That's probably why they did it. Honestly. They see the Yasuo coming back. We're going to lose the Yasuo. You're going to lose to Ezreal. We're 1-0 up. What can we do to cheese them and tilt them into oblivion? I know, guys. It's, it's Ezreal. RNG did it. It almost worked. It didn't work, though. It did not, no. And it isn't working. And it is not indeed. Invictus Gaming, they keep their poise. They keep their calm in this series, and they're able to keep themselves locked down. Just to update you guys at home at what's happening, the Shy is having some headset issues. Game sounds are not going through. And those are fairly important in trying to figure out what's actually happening. Yeah, if you have the language barrier, you don't want to double that up with just literally not hearing sounds. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? Retreat ping, retreat ping. Respectable. Oh, I guess I'll keep pushing. It'd be very <laughs> confusing to have to deal with that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, not just the language barrier, not just the lack of sound. There are certain champions that you want to be able to hear sounds from. As an example, Talia. if it was Condi or Talia having mm -hmm. those sound problems and suddenly it gets a bit harder. Corky, if you're playing against one, you need to hear the package coming across. So if you ever can't hear game sounds, you don't just toughen up and follow through the end of the game. You really want them working. Especially since, you know, one last team fight should end the deal. Don't take chances, especially if you're not hearing anything. If something, a peripheral isn't working, you don't want to say, well, the game's going to be over anyways. Because if you lose the fight and you say, well, actually, hands up, referee, something's happening. Four, 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 some, someone changed something <laughs> on my screen. It's like, well, that happened a minute ago. That's not going to change anything. Mm -hmm. 
of course, it very well could be a single fight that decides this game here. Invictus Gaming have a massive advantage. We just saw a massive buy from them. The Mountain Dragon being picked up by Roki, and now Baron going to spawn in just a few seconds. Double super minions with Baron buff. Huge gold and stat lead for Team Invictus Gaming. I, I already heard it from you, Raz, saying that it's impossible for WE to come back, but now I want Rusty to double check, second guess the math. All this, right. this is a complicated formula. Does, does it work out that way? Do WE complex. have a way back in? <laughs> uh, How deep is this formula? I actually have to make a mistake for WE to, okay. to come back in at all, just based off the state of the map right now. Uh, ultimately, they've outscaled them. They've started to outplay them. They're set to go. They've got the waves working, and Baron's all they really need to end this game. But we've seen it from West. He does like to go forwards. He does That's like true. to get picked off. It's not like Mystic is weak in the state of this game right now. And Choga can one hit West as well can one hit carries, and Lucian's another carry that needs to be looked at. So there is a world. I'm not going to say there are many options with which this world exists, mm. but there is a world that WE find the team fight, but they'll need to get four in a row probably to yeah. win this game. And okay. honestly, we've seen comes back, comebacks happen. In fact, just yesterday we saw a lot of back and forth. But that's off of the draft giving you some playmaking in that roster. We're not seeing that here. Cho'Gath is, there's no playmaking on Cho'Gath. He's a run at you and you're like, ah, oh, well, they ran away from me. What am I gonna do? Uh, there's no, well, there's the Braum. Maybe he flashed ulties, but that is super hard to get across and still get something we go. in favor of yourself. We're back into the game. Mm -hmm. So immediately, I think Talia, if she can get a flick that is hard enough to get them in a decent position, would have to do it now. Losing Baron with no inhib would be, Disastrous. And that was the steal attempt, just came and gone. Perhaps. Was that Ezreal ultimate? Looking for vision instead, yeah it was. True shot barrage. But take a look at the vision on that side of the map, it's already missing. IG did their due diligence, they cleaned it out, denied any chance for WE to get in outside of that Ez ultimate, yeah. which did miss. And you don't disagree with WE's decision here. We were saying that Baron may be the final nail on the coffin. Well, that's definitely still the case. But how did WE leave their base to contest that? The answer isn't really there as they only just recently had one inhibitor come back up alive. They've got one wave pushing. IG can go to that lane as soon as they like. If they want, they can take it apart. Or they can just end the game through bottom. The onus is on them to just do wherever they would like. WE stuck dealing. Yeah, they just walk it right on down that mid lane. All five members of IG and inhib has respawned. So IG, of course, ever the diligent team, walk on over towards it to escort the next wave in. As that's a Weaver's Wall actually separating it them. Is. The shot is forward. Caught. He's pinned into the back. Rookie fires across onto Ben just to keep him locked down, and the seismic shove misses. Yeah, good form from Megan to utilize. Oh, West. West. Steps West. forward again, looking to end the game right now. Equalizer on top of it. Ben eats the culling and dies to West. Knock up from Ning as Mystic takes to the skies, but Shea is low, burned down by the Shy. Oh. They get a stun, but IG chase it down to the fountain. Three members dead. Who needs the inhib when you can end the game? It's Invictus Gaming dropping it, taking the Nexus, getting another kill for the Pride. Oh, they're gonna dive? Nah. But they bring it right on back. Ladies and gentlemen, this series is tied up one to one. That's right, game one goes to WE, but IG do not look like losing in the second game at, at all. WE brought out an Ezreal jungle, doesn't really come up to standard compared to anything that Ning was able to do on his Gragas, and IG just walk over them. Yeah, you have that one game buffer zone. WE takes game one, thinks that they can be a little bit cute.